This morning, our lectionary takes us to the book of Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter. This morning, I'm going to do a, um, a blending of preaching a sermon and some Bible study. Uh, for me, I probably uh, need to teach this text more than I should preach on it this morning, because I think it does have some real meaning to us, but in order to get there, I need to explain some things and tie some things together for you so that the text is more enriching this morning to you. I've actually even enclosed within, included within um, the scripture that is in your bulletin, uh, a alternative scripture uh, so that you can get to see what is going on in this uh, passage. I read somewhere between six and eight different versions of each of the texts that I preach on each week. And as I kept reading this text in its multiple translations, it just kept, the Lord kept putting on my heart, hey, teach this one, don't preach this one. Um, so we'll, we'll do so this morning. So let's read from the book of Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, verses 1 through 8. And it reads as follows. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea and the Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab. As the Lord had said, he buried him in Moab, the valley opposite Beth Peor, but to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. So... Moses has been leading his people for 40 years. And they've been traveling all over the place. And finally they get right to where God had promised them they were going to have all that he had promised. And because of Moses' past sin life and the way he was interpreting God's will, God did not let him travel into that land that was promised his people. If we read the Word of God in its context, and I mean, yes, this is the Word of God, but in the Scripture, it said the Word of God took His life, essentially. When we translate that, it means upon the mouth of God. So when we read that Word of God with regard to how Moses' life was ended, think of it in terms of, we put it as the mouth of the Lord. He spoke it into existence. Read into that church. He struck him dead right then and right there. The ancient Jewish traditions will say that Moses died as God took his soul away with a kiss. The translation from their ancient languages suggest again that God, it wasn't a violent death, but God. God took his life right then, right there. Uh, Maimonides is a Jewish theologian in the, 11, in the 1100s. And he said of the 903 different ways to die, this one would be the best. A kiss or a lack of breath from your Lord calling you home. Now here's where I really want you to think about the fact that this relationship that Moses had with God because 
Moses, one of the very few folks that saw God face to face. And they were totally entwined with one another. And he did show Moses favor. And Moses did love the Lord. But Moses also went off on his own from time to time and did Moses' deal and not God's deal. But many translations use a capital H, he, when it says about Moses being buried. So here's another translation. So I read from you the NIV. Here's how it reads in the King James Version. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of God. And he, capital H, he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his grave to this day. That translation, capital H, means he who buried Moses, God himself. Again, showing you the tightness of the relationship. So if he is willing to use Moses for so many years to lead the people of Israel and then gets him right before the promised land and then takes his life but loves him enough that he personally buried him. Not a group of folks that he sent. He, he meaning God. What greater honor could you have than the Lord himself to put you in the ground? So in reality, what did God really do? He led him to Mount Nebo to do what? To call him home. To show him, you've done your job. You ain't getting there, but you've done your job. And now, your time on earth is done. And he takes his life, but then he buries him. I don't know about y'all, but if I could have a funeral and someone could be the undertaker, I'd choose God in a heartbeat. So Moses did his job. He led those people he was leading, that, the children of Israel, to the promised land, but his own sin and misrepresentation of God's word and will at times in his life and in his leadership made God interpret him in such a way that he couldn't reach the promised land, although he was a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The real message for me in reading this piece of Scripture was God's program didn't end with Moses, right? We, we learn later that there were great leaders of the Israelites throughout time and then we look in our present day we have so many just lovers of Jesus so many people who love the Lord that are doing his work so one of the lessons we should learn is that the work and the love of God here on earth did not end with Moses nor would it end with any man the torch has been passed and God's work needs to continue to be done so when we read this passage, a lot of people, when they read it, start to um, focus a whole lot on the fact that, that the promised land has been reached, and this is an, oh, by the way, that Moses is dead. Well, he's old, he's got to go sometime. But they don't pay enough attention to the language used. If you read, and this is my uh, advertisement church for, if you're a King James Version person, read something else from time to time. If you're an NIV person, read something, another translation from time to time. If you've got an Amplified Bible, great. Read different translations because there's subtleties. It doesn't say he in the NIV, but it does in the King James Version. Capital he. So if you read the NIV version, you lose that insight. So I hope this morning in my teaching to you of this text and using an alternative translation, you get some sense that this moment was way more important than what it originally seems if you're just reading that story. Because most folks go, oh, okay, great, they reached the promised land and off they go because that's the next part of this story. When we really, I want us to focus this morning and I want us to focus all week on the fact that 
Even though Moses was a leader, and even though Moses did great things, God used him for the time and place he needed to use him, and then also continued to use him in death. Because we are left with a, uh, an example of the fact that we can be doing what we think is God's will, but when God really takes a look at what his will is versus our actions, we're always going to come up short. If Moses came up short, what does that say for us? But it gives us hope in the fact that Moses, in the end, was rewarded. Because what do you think God really did with Moses' soul if he was the person who personally buried him? Where do you think Moses is? Very good, Evan. You might be the only person who gets this sermon today, and I thank you for that. From the mouth of children. His appointed place is in heaven. Remember, we're pre-Jesus, so we can't rely on a Messiah. All you can rely on at that point was, were you following the edicts and laws of Mosaic law? And were you following Jewish law? That's essentially what they had at that point. And even though he fell short, God used him and then honored him. The other part that I want you to take away from this today is all that occurred because of the relationship that Moses had with God. Moses spoke to God more than any person that I would have ever run into. He was in constant conversation with the Lord. The Lord had conversations with Moses that were then shared with other leaders of the nation of Israel and were shared with the masses. And we have to understand that if we really want to be in concert with God's will, even when we fall short, just as Moses fell short, it's our relationship with God that allows us to be in concert, not only with his will, but that we might help others and we might encourage others in their lives. So the last thing I want us to take from the Old Testament reading this morning is this. Um, because the gospel message uh, in the uh, lectionary uh, this week, as well as the uh, epistle, were easy to preach. Those, those are real easy texts. They're fun. They were good stories. There's lots of stuff that Jesus is doing in those things. This is tougher to take. And what I want you to take away from the Old Testament is this. Don't run from the Old Testament. But also, you don't have to use the Old Testament to beat on one another but we can learn from it. And so here we are in a place in which um, I hope that you see this part of our lineage uh, attaching ourselves to God. I hope you see this in a different light today. So I hope that when you think of and all those hymns and all the songs and all the poems that say and tell us about reaching the promised land, I hope that this gives you some pause for a minute, just a minute, that the leader of whom got the Israelites to the promised land, saw it, but never entered it. And he never entered it because God wanted to put him in check and use him as an example to the nation of Israel. When I say follow my word, I mean follow my word, not your interpretation of the word, not your thinking about the word, not, well, I'll do part of the word and I won't do the other part. When you're doing God's will, it's God's will, not your will within some aspect of God's will. The Lord is going to use us even in our brokenness. He'll use a murderer. He'll use a liar. He'll use a thief. He'll use a harlot. He'll use someone who is a slanderer. He'll use a tax collector. He'll use a eunuch. And he'll use you. If you extend your mind wide enough that you can allow the Word of God to enter it and to champion and to guide and to circumscribe your thoughts in such a way that it motivates you to serve God the way that Moses served God, what a mighty and powerful force we would be in the name of Jesus Christ. So I encourage you this week as you go out, I want you to think about the fact 
that although Moses did great things, we have to remember at the very end, his life was swiftly taken and he didn't receive the promise that he was given. How do we translate that into our faith? Here's how we do this. We have been told of the promised land. And that place is called heaven. And the streets are paved with gold. And there are mansions built for all of those who God calls home. And they find their name in the book of names. We have seen the promised land. But on our day of reckoning, when we are called, we will all see God. We will all see God face to face as Moses did himself. Everyone, every sinner, every believer, every non-believer will see God face to face. The question becomes, do you get a glimpse of the promised land or do you inherit it? Because when we talk about hell, what we're really talking about, what? Is a complete removal of ourselves from God for eternity. When you have seen the promised land, as we have as Christians and as believers in faith, don't we want to make sure that no one falls short right at the end? that the final kiss they receive from God is a kiss in which their life has been taken and they have been shunned from the kingdom of heaven. Take that with you this week. And as you go through your week, understand that just like Moses, you have seen the promised land and you will see God. The question is, will you reside with him? Amen? Amen. Amen.